As you probably know by now, Digimon is one of my favorite franchises of all time. Growing up on Digimon Adventure and Zero Two, and then some of Tamers uh, before growing up and then coming back to the franchise as an adult. I truly loved the anime or the cartoon as I would have called it when I was a kid. And even throughout my period of not being an active Digimon fan, I still played a lot of the video games. But I think even now, with my knowledge of Digimon, there's a lot of Digimon properties and media that I just have never indulged in. And now that I've started looking them up and reading and getting into them, I think they're really cool. These are some of my favorite Digimon spin-offs. The first one I want to touch on is one I actually haven't finished. I barely started reading it two days ago because of how much my friends Proto and Hunter have gone on about it and because of the fact that the cards are showing up in the new Digimon card game, but that is Digimon V Tamers. V Tamers started way back at the beginning before the anime in 1998, so it's kind of the original Tai Chi or Tai story. It's also hard not to love it when his partner Digimon is part of the Vmon line, and you know I. I, I love the Vmon and Wormon lines. Right from the outset, it has such a nice, deep layer to it. It's got the elements of the real world V pets, it's got the digital world, it's got lore that's set up with Magna Angemon. And now, starting to read it, I'm starting to see little bits and pieces of it that extend through to the rest of the franchise. Obviously, Tai shows up in Digimon Adventure and Digimon Adventure 2020 and a bunch of other Digimon Adventure related properties. Vigimon obviously leading into Vmon becoming Davis's partner. You've got the kind of competitive Digimon element, which comes up a lot in Digimon Tamers. It's kind of the same dynamic that Rika and Ryo have is kind of the dynamic that Taichi and Neo have. At least at first, I know there's a lot of Rika and Ryo shipping, but I, I don't I don't mean that. I just mean that they're the competitive element. They're, they're both as good as each other. Kind of, and there's also a lot of little things that come through there. Rosemon as a Digimon partner, Piedmon as a Digimon partner, straight up Omnimon or Omegamon as a Digimon partner, which we wouldn't really see someone have specifically Omnimon as their partner until, spoilers, 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 Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. This also is a Digimon property that has Digimon nicknames, which is something the games have always done, but the anime has kind of shied away from. So it's kind of cool to see even more personality in like Gabo the Gabumon. Next up on the list is Digimon Rearize, and I know that I have publicly criticized and seen a lot of criticisms of this app slash game, but, but, but bear with me. Yes, the gacha, endless, kind of boring, log in, get gems, do the thing, get the Digimon ad nauseum for no reason it is not great. The app constantly crashing, taking forever to load is also not great. But what is great about Digimon Rearize is the story. It's basic, it's drawn out because of the nature of them releasing it in chapters, but I really like the character's setup and progressing storyline of Digimon Rearize. Harrismon is a really good, unique partner. I really like his design. I don't love his evolution so much, but what I do like, and I may catch flack for this, is Harrismon is what I like to call the good Makomon. And I don't mean that as in the good version, I mean as in Makomon done well. The idea of like a deviant Digimon who just wants to be good, but is sort of thrown into this path of evil as it was touched on with Gilmon, was heavily done with Mekumon, but I think Harrismon is the best example of this. I also love the idea of Digivices as phones. Uh, Last Evolution Kazuna kind of touches on this, where the phones become kind of like a proxy for their Digivices, but your straight up cell phone being a Digivice is something that I've dreamed about since smartphones became a thing. Probably even before then, I probably wanted my Nokia 22 fucking hundred to have Snake and a Digivice. I really feel like out of all Digimon games and apps, Rearize has the most potential to actually be an anime. Maybe not a full season, but I'd love like some webisodes, you know? They have got animated segments for intros and such like that. Partners are also really solid. You have Doromon, Leomon, slash Elecmon, Harrismon, Lopmon, Pumpkinmon? <laughs> so yes, while Rearize is far from perfect and it's very sloggy and boring and once you clear the story and are waiting for more story, it's so paint by numbers, 
at the at the core there is something really good. And actually, I don't even mind the combat for a mobile game. If they aren't going to make an anime of Rear Eyes, I genuinely think it would be perfect as a proper like Switch game. Obviously, Digimon Survive is super delayed right now, and I don't know if they want to start working on other Digimon projects. But taking the story of Rear Eyes and then sort of upgrading it, kind of like a uh, Kingdom Hearts Recoded. Oh boy, I would be down for that. Next up is something on the list that I don't even think a lot of Digimon fans know super well, but it is the Digimon D Cyber Manhwa. That's right, Manhwa, not Manga. D Cyber is actually a Chinese comic book Manhwa, released from 2000 released from 2005 through to 2006. You'll probably be more familiar with the Digimon X Evolution movie that was the CGI sort of first CGI Digimon movie, even though they'd used CGI previously in small segments of the other anime, featuring like a new kind of protagonist partner, which is kind of what they were trying to do with Doraemon for a while, and people do like Doraemon, I don't, but you know, they try and push it as kind of like a mascot Digimon sometimes. And it was where we were introduced to the X Antibody, which is kind of the out the edge of the Digimon world. I'm so sorry, I don't want to say it, but most X antibodies are just like, what if it was edgier? Something like cool. You may also be familiar with Digimon Chronicle, which is kind of a manga version of X Evolution. Not really, but it's got Doraemon, it's got X antibody, it's got all these kinds of things. Digimon D Cyber then is kind of a Chinese version of X Evolution, which in itself is a movie version of Chronicle. Digimon Chronicle, not the not the superhero movie. But D Cyber is really interesting to me. It has a very different setup and it follows more of a kind of Chinese bent. The new Digivice and Tamers introduced are really cool. That cover art looks awesome. It still uses Dorymon and Ryudamon for the protagonist, but the way it tells its story is very different. It's very interesting. The panels of this manhwa are just filled with life and it's a real joy to read. It is readable online, dubiously legally, but it's just a really lovely example of the kind of Alice in Wonderland falling down the rabbit hole, kind of literally in this one, and coming into a world that feels familiar. If you're familiar with the Chronicle, Chronicle X, and X Evolutions franchises, but is also its own thing, and I kind of like when a Japanese product in China or Korea gets its own thing. You may be familiar with uh, Tokusatsu, where, for example, uh, Korea and China will have their own exclusive toys in a Kamen Rider or Sentai toy line, or of course, more famously, Korea will adapt Sentai as Power Rangers and did a actual sequel series that they completely originally filmed or Kyoryuji called Power Rangers Dino Force Brave. So I really like seeing other cultures being officially allowed to have new takes on Digimon because sometimes you get something really good like D-Cyber and sometimes you get the weird Panini Digimon comics. And last on the list is something I have wanted for years. The Digimon Axel or Accelerator. If you were around my age, you probably remember the weird craze of like barcode scanner toys and they've tried to make a resurgence every now and then, but it's never really worked. I always liked the idea of real things interacting with a fake world. That's why I think the success of augmented reality is so cool to me. I love the idea of pointing my phone at real things and virtual objects popping up. You should really do this for Yu-Gi-Oh, by the way. There was like a tech demo of a Yu-Gi-Oh card fight happening once with the projections and uh, do that. Also, Digimon should do that for the new card game. And that's pretty much what Digimon Axel is. By the way, Digimon Axel is a fucking amazing name. It is a very sleek looking V-Pet. In fact, um, it looks incredibly like a thing that a lot of YouTubers get paid to shill. I am not being paid to talk about this because I think they look pretty bad. Ridge wallets? <laughs> It kind of looks like a Ridge wallet. <laughs> One of the things I found really cool about the Axel is that it had customizable faceplates, so theoretically you could kind of make your own Digivice that is exclusively yours, which I think is very cool. And on top of that, it had a scanner. It wasn't a barcode scanner, it was like an NFC type scanner, by which you would scan the DNA from these sort of DNA cards, and then get the Digimon as a virtual pet on your screen. Digimon has experimented over time with lots of different mechanics with the cards, for example in the Tamers toy line where you could scan the cards, theoretically, it never worked for me. And I really like this idea, it reminds me a lot of the Nintendo e-reader where you would be able to like get Pokemon stuff and Mario stuff by getting the right cards, and I think if they could have just have found the brand synergy here to have Axel come out maybe with an anime, and then release cards that were scannable without the big toggles that are on the cards. This could have been a huge hit. 
This did come out in 2005, which is probably a little bit late to kind of hop on the, the Yu-Gi-Oh wave, but Yu-Gi-Oh was still pretty popular. And it also had a lot of V-Pets. There were four versions, Justice, Evil, Nature, and Ultimate Gina. With Digimon pushing forward, with Digimon Survive coming out, the brand new season of the anime, it's a little bit of a shame to me that the Digivice from the new show is a premium Bandai exclusive, which, you know, is fine, but the... The content of the device isn't that exciting. They're cashing in on nostalgia a lot recently by releasing like the original V pets, which again is also fine. But I'd like to see them make these strides with V pets again. The Digimon card game looks like it's going to sell absolute gangbusters globally. It's in huge demand. I think if they have safe properties like the card game in the anime, I'd love to see them experiment with the V-Pets again and do something like Axel, but for the modern age. Or, you know, just, just release an official app, an official V-Pet app, maybe with like a QR feature for... Why is there no official cell phone V-Pet app yet? There's, a, there's like a mini V-Pet inside Rear Eyes, but it barely does anything. All right, guys, that's going to be about it. As always, please do like this video. It helps immensely. If you're going to dislike because you're a weirdo, that helps too, so I don't mind. Please subscribe. I guess ringing the bell means you get notified of the videos, but yeah. More importantly, please leave a comment below letting me know what your favorite Digimon spin-off is. It doesn't have to be spin-off, obscure, whether it's like your favorite Digimon video game, do you like Applemon a whole bunch? Let me know. And if there's any Digimon subjects you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments down below because once October is over, I am going to be going digi hard. I'm going to be going hard on Digimon. I'm going to be making a lot of Digimon videos. <laughs> See you next time.